let me introduce to the course on materials and heat balance. But I have thought best way to introduce the course content of this lecture is to see energy and environment issues related to metal production. Now, say metals, metals they can be obtained either from primary resources, primary resources that is also called natural reserves, natural reserves or from secondary resources, secondary resources and secondary resources mostly they are scrap and recycled material and recycled materials. Now, metals as all of us know are required for the development of different industrial sectors, maybe construction, maybe aircraft, maybe heavy industry, whatever, everywhere metals are used. So, needless to mention, there is a very large requirement of different metals for different industrial sectors. Therefore, the secondary resources which are from scrap or recycled material, they hardly can meet the enorm requirement of metal for the growth of the several industries. Therefore, we are mainly concerned with the use of natural reserves for the production of metal and that is where the course starts. Now, what is a natural reserve of a metal? say what is a natural reserve of a metal. The natural reserve of a metal is called an ore. Natural reserve of a metal, any metal is called ore, where ore, an ore is an aggregate of minerals or is an aggregate of minerals. That means, the ore will have along with the metallic mineral, with the metallic mineral I mean the, the, the mineral of a metal in which we are interested plus there are several other type of mineral. So, in fact, ore is an aggregate of minerals and a mineral in general definition is an inorganic compound is an inorganic compound in which elements are combined in fixed stoichiometric proportions. For example, if I take Al2O3, in Al2O3 two atoms of aluminum are combined with 1.5 moles of oxygen or if you take Fe 2 O 3 same 2 moles of iron, they are combined with 1.5 moles of oxygen. So, that has to be very clear, the natural reserve of a metal is an ore in the form of mineral that is an important. So, we can say that ore, it consists of valuable mineral valuable mineral plus gang mineral. Now, with the valuable mineral I mean out of all the minerals that are present in ore, valuable is one from which we want to extract the metal. Now, let us see the uh, ore, valuable mineral, gang mineral and so on. So, if I put here metal, put here 
say ore, name of the ore, valuable mineral, valuable mineral, then I put here metal grade. Now, for example, if I take nickel as a metal, then ore is sulphide ore, sulphide in which nickel is in form of sulphide. It could be N I 3 S 2 or it could be N I F E S 2 or so on. The metal grade in case of uh, sulphide ore is 2.3 percent nickel. The oxidic ore that is called lateritic ore, in which nickel is present and the grade of the nickel is 1 percent nickel, 1 percent nickel. Now, let us take it lead, sulphide ore which is called galena is the name of the ore and here valuable mineral is PBS, metal grade is 5 point 5 percent lead and sometimes it contains zinc also, the grade of zinc is 8.6 percent zinc. Let us take the aluminum which is again an oxidic ore, the name of the ore is called bauxite, the valuable mineral here is Al2O3 and metal grade is 17.4 percent aluminum. Though I am giving an absolute value, but well it may be ranging from this to this. Similarly, titanium name of the ore is ilmenite and it is form of FeO TiO 2 from which titanium is to be determined and the metal grade is 36 percent titanium. Similarly, I can take copper this sulphide ore. Here, the valuable mineral is CuFeS2 and the grade of the copper, notice it is 3 percent copper or 2 percent copper, very low grade. Similarly, iron, name of the ore, all of you know it is hematite, it is Fe2O3 and it is the 64 percent iron. Now, before we analyze this table, what I wish to define? I wish to define just the metal grade, metal grade that is equal to amount of metal in ore, amount of metal upon uh, weight of metal, upon weight of ore, sorry, amount of metal upon weight of ore, that is how the metal grade is defined. And uh, the other all say the uh, balance that is I have written 64 percent iron or 2 percent copper and so on what I have written, the balance is gang mineral, balance is gang mineral in the table and this gang mineral essentially consists of SiO2 for all types of ore that I have listed in the table, gang mineral SiO2 plus Al2O3 plus P2O5 and plus, uh, plus uh, MgO sometimes plus you can have TiO2 also in some of the ores. For example, hematite, hematite may have SiO2, Al2O3, P2O5 and so on. Similarly, for example, if you have uh, chalcopyrite or the sulphide ore of copper, CuFeS2 is the valuable mineral, SiO2, Al2O3, then uh, Fe2O3, they are the gang minerals. It depends upon which ore you are under consideration. 
Now, say we note from the table, what we notice from the table? We note from the table the following. First is metal grade in sulphide ore, metal grade in sulphide ore is very low as compared with as compared with oxidic ore. Say you see iron grade is 64 percent whereas copper grade is 2 percent that is what is meant. That means, a large amount of gang material will be produced when sulphide ores are treated. Second we mean that lower metal grade lower metal grade of an ore, it means more amount of waste will be generated, more amount of waste, because you have to remove in order to get the metal. Third important thing that we notice from here and that all of you know that metals in the valuable mineral, metals in the valuable mineral is either in the form of sulphide or in the form of oxides. They are chemically combined. So, therefore, these oxides are sulphide, if you want to separate them, it is a very high energy is required. I am giving you some of the energy. For example, Fe 20 O 3, the heat of formation value at 298 Kelvin for Fe 20 O 3, it is minus 198 5000 kilo calorie. That much amount of heat you will be requiring if you want to dissociate iron Fe 20 O 3 into iron and oxygen. Say, if I take Al 20 O 3, you will be requiring around minus 380,000 kilo calorie. You can imagine and these kilo calorie, these are per kg mole. So, imagine the amount of material that you want to produce. For example, if I take say Fe 304, you will be requiring around minus 266,000 kilo calorie per kg mole of the energy. Similarly, I mean I can list down the heat of formation that would be required or heat of formation that is associated with the formation of a compound or sulphide. That means, you have to provide that much of energy in order to get the metal. So, that means, the economic extraction of metal, economic extraction of metal economic extraction of metal from oxide ore, from oxide ore what it require? First of all suitable reductant, suitable reductant, because naturally so much amount of energy is very difficult to provide it, it will be highly economical. So, we have to see a suitable reductant which is cheaply and abundantly available and second thing we require source of energy. Source of energy, why we require source of energy? That is we have to separate the gang from the metal and these two things when we want to employ pyrometallurgical route, we want to employ pyrometer route. Now, similarly for sulphide ore, for sulphide ore, the extraction of metal, it is not it is though thermodynamically it is possible to reduce sulphide, a copper sulphide or lead sulphide directly into metal, but it is highly environmentally hazardous. Therefore, what is done? A sulphide ore, 
is first converted to oxide and then followed by reduction. Again you have to find out a suitable reducing agent when we uh, want to go for pyrometallurgical route. In some cases sulphide is converted to MET. MET is a mixture of sulphide and then followed by oxidation to get the metal. So, these are the things that you will require. Now, through hydrometallurgical route, if you are through hydromet route, we require leaching and uh, electrical energy and electrical energy. So, let us further follow it up. Now, let us consider a production of metal from an ore. Let us consider a general flow sheet of production of metal from an ore. For example, I take an ore, whatever the ore from the natural reserve, I have to subject it to the mining operation and this mining operation has to be followed by mineral beneficiation, mineral beneficiation and from here I will be getting ore concentrate and ore concentrate for pyrometallurgical route, pyromet route or depending upon the quality of the ore concentrate. I can go for this is again ore concentrate and I can go for hydromet route. Now, this will comprise of almost all production of metal from natural reserve. First step is mineral beneficiation followed by extraction of metal either from pyromet or from hydromet. From pyromet, the clear you require a reducing agent, a reductant and energy and source of energy. Here you have to bring metal in the solution, metal is brought in solution and followed by separation. Again for large tonnage of metal production pyrometallurgical is most preferred route as compared to hydrometallurgical extraction because large amount of metal can be produced by pyrometallurgical method. So, what we notice from here that in pyrometallurgical extraction there is a large amount of energy is required. Now, let us see the energy requirement for metal production, energy requirement for metal production. Now, I just give you a plot say this is the 1, I put here for example, 0 that is 50, 100, 150, uh, then I have 200, 250, 300 and let us say 350 and this is the gross energy requirement, gross energy requirement in mega joule per kg of metal. Let me take first of all titanium. Now, titanium would require around 350 mega joule per kg of titanium. You see that very enormous amount of energy is required, this is for the titanium. Now, on the other hand, if I take say aluminum, that will be requiring around, so if I take here aluminum, aluminum would be requiring around approximately 200 mega joule per kg of metal. You can imagine the amount of energy that would be required. For nickel, if you talk of nickel, 
nickel will be somewhere around say 150. This is nickel when we go for pyrometallurgical route, pyrometer route. Now, if you go for hydromate route, then slightly higher energy is required. This is for nickel when hydromate route. Now, say for copper, for copper somewhat less energy is required, this is for the copper and uh, for steel also you require a less amount of energy. So, this is for the steel, then lead is also very small amount of energy is required and zinc is also from what this type of energy is required. This is for the zinc and this is for the lead. So, this is the I mean just a estimate of the gross energy requirement. Now, this large energy that is required, large amount of energy that you require because of two factors. First of all, very high heat of formation as you note, very high heat of formation and second is on the low grade ores, low grade rather low grade I mean say low metal grade of the ore. These are the factors probably that are that determine the so called the gross energy requirement. Now, what energy we supply say we supply say energy that we employ to produce steel in the steel industry that results in production of products as well as by product. So, what energy we we supply to the steel plant it produces for example, steel you require it also produces gaseous product, it also produces gaseous product, it also produces molten product say for example, slag, then you also produce liquid by product, liquid by product that is coal tar and benzene say in the coking process. Then you have, you have solid by products. and these are for example, coke breeze in the coking process, blast furnace dust. Similarly, in case of non-ferrous metals, the energy which is supplied to non-ferrous industry whether it is zinc, whether it is copper or lead, the product will be liquid metal followed by slag, dross, spice. So, what I wish to say is that whatever energy you supply for the production of the metal besides the product, the by product or the production of by product is a part of the method of or is a part of the production of the metal. That means, these uh, by product are going to be produced. Now, let us see now effect of ore grade. effect of ore grade on gross energy requirement. So, I will again try to plot say here I take for example, ore grade or metal grade say I will take here 0 0.5, 1, 1.5 and 2 and here I take 100, 200, 300 and somewhere 350 and that is again gross energy requirement mega joule per kg. Mind you now I am plotting as a function of the metal grade of the ore. So, 
just I take two example for example, copper and nickel for copper these values this is the case for copper whereas, the above the case is for nickel. So, you see what, what important message that you get from this particular plot is lower is the grade, metal grade in the ore higher will be the energy consumption higher is the metal grade of the ore, lower is the energy consumption. So, that point is important that means, ore grade will play a very important role because a large amount of energy will be required during mining and mineral beneficiation operation particularly when the metal grade of the ore is very, very low that is the issue in case of the energy production. Now, just I will give you a little idea about the source of energy. Now, source of energy it could be exothermic reactions, well which is not a problem at all. They in fuel that is the fossil fuel is another source of energy and the electric energy, but the electric energy if it derived from fuel then we are talking again of fuel as a source of energy, but well if it is derived other than the fossil fuel then it is again a extra source of energy. So, you this is you require for example, thermal energy because you have to eat. So, energy supply is an important issue how you are going to supply energy, how much amount of energy is required, how much amount of the fuel is supplied and so on and so forth. And second you also require to supply chemical energy, chemical energy means energy that is required for reducing. For example, you have gotten an oxide you want to reduce it, you have to search a reductant which is abundantly and cheaply and economically available. If you see the lingam diagram of which you are aware, you can find out n number of reductant which can reduce a particular oxide. But remember you are producing the metal on a very tonnage scale, so you cannot afford to use a reductant which is not economical, which is expensive. So, therefore, the requirement is that here cheaply and abundantly should be available. So, now Another important case uh, is here, how energy is obtained from the fuel by combustion, how by combustion the elements of the fuel they are converted into products of combustion and these products of combustion are again discharged into the atmosphere. That means what larger energy requirement, larger fuel consumption and larger amount of products of combustion will be discharged into the atmosphere, meaning thereby you are creating an environmental issue over there. In selection of the fuel, temperature is also an important issue, you have to create a particular temperature. So, for that the selection of the fuel is again an important issue, you have to provide an oxidizing medium, oxygen is the issue from where, from air you will, you will get the oxygen. In oxygen, in air you all of you know that 1 mole of oxygen is derived from 4.76 moles of air that means 3.76 moles of nitrogen. So, if you are supplying say 1 mole of oxygen for a particular reaction from air then you are also having 3.76 moles of nitrogen and this nitrogen will take away the large amount of heat. So, what I mean to say in pyrometallurgical extraction you have to optimize, you have to economize the source of energy. You have to see that the combustion which occurs by way of air, it has to be optimized otherwise you will have a large amount of energy consumption. So, this is an energy consumption issue related to metal production. Now, let us see what are the environmental issues. Let me address little bit of environmental issues. Now, you already noted that by use of energy the products of combustion are discharged into the atmosphere. When you produce the metal, except metal which is a product, rest are all by product, you have to see what you are going to do. Either reuse it or recycle it or recirculate it. If not, then you will be dumping into the atmosphere, you will be dumping on the earth. That means, again there are environmental issues. So, the production of metal from the 
ores that result in the formation of for example, emissions, emissions, unwanted solids, unwanted solids, liquid say liquid slag, slag is a mixture of oxides, then gases like CO, CO2, SO2, SO3, NOx and so on and these things you are producing during mining and during processing operations directly you are producing and indirectly you are producing by consumption of raw materials because in raw materials are processed again these things will be produced. Now, let us say the factors which affect the environmental impact, factors which affect the environmental impact one is the ore grade, one is the ore grade, second is the electrical energy source, electric energy source, third is the fuel type, fourth material transport, because when you produce a large tonne of metal say for example, steel you are producing 7000 tons or 5000 tons per day, you can imagine the amount of raw material that will require to transport, then the process technology. The process technology. These are some of the factors that will affect the so called environmental impact. Now, out of which the ore grade is the most important thing because as you notice, higher is the metal grade in the ore, less will be the uh, by product that will be produced. So, now once after beneficiation and mining you have produced a concentrate of a required quality or of a required grade, then emissions from downstream processing they are not very significantly affected. So, what I am going to draw for you, I am going to give you a picture in that if I plot here, say if I put here solid waste burden solid waste burden in kg per kg metal. As I said once you get a metal of a part, once you get and concentrate of a particular grade, then this figure I mean can be seen in terms of a general and if I put here ore grade in percent metal. say here I put 100, 200, 300 and say 350, here I put 10, 20 and 30. So, this curve something like, so you note from here, you note from here that lower is the grade for example, less than 10 percent of the metal, the large amount of waste burden will be produced. This is quite natural because if the metal grade is 10 percent, you are producing 90 percent is the waste. So, ore grade plays a very, very important role. Now, as the metal demand will grow, you will extract or you will use more natural reserve to produce the metal. Now, the question is what about the quality of the natural reserves? You must have heard that the high quality ore reserves of particular metals they are depleting. That means, you will be employing more low grade ore in order to sustain the economic needs of the country or in order to sustain the diversified needs of the industrial sector. So, in the future if the proper technologies are not being developed, then more amount of waste 
is likely to be produced when the low grade or low metal grade ores are processed. It is quite natural when high grade ores are depleting, you have to cater or you have to see that you supply the metal which is required for the industrial growth. How will you do it? The only way is that you exploit low grade reserves. So, what I wanted to say is that as the ore grade will become a very, very important issue in the near future, particularly when you treat low grade metal ores. Now, let us see also the global warming potential. Let us see also global warming potential. You must have heard that the global warming potential is becoming very, very important. All of a sudden, the last few years people are talking that because of the discharge of the gases, a large amount of say a global warming is coming into picture and there are problems over there. So, energy use is in fact directly associated with the discharge of the carbon dioxide gases and possibly it is considered to be one of the cause of global warming. Now, why I put this particular thing to your attention is that because you require large amount of energy derived from the combustion of fossil fuel and the combustion of fossil fuel will generate its perfect combustion product which is carbon dioxide. So, it is in that perspective we have to look into the consumption of energy in terms of the global warming potential. Say I will just try to again have a plot. this one. So, this let us say 0, 10, 20, 30 and let me take somewhere here is 35 and this is global warming potential evaluated in terms of kilogram CO2 equivalent per kg metal. So, again you see titanium if we take say titanium has a very high environmental impact. This is for the titanium. Now, if we take again for aluminum, this is for the aluminum. Now, the quantification which I have shown on the ordinate, it is more or less approximate. I will give you the reference from where I taken the value. So, if you are interested, you can go to the original reference and uh, update yourself. Say for nickel, this is for the nickel, nickel pyrometal root and uh, this is for the nickel hydromate root. Well, for zinc it is quite a small bit. Similarly, for a steel it is also a very small, this is for zinc, this is production of steel and uh, somewhere here we have say copper, say this one is copper for pyromines and uh, this one, this is for copper hydromines by hydrometer. Now, say my whole objective to show this particular thing is to give you a feel that production of metal requires energy and as you require energy, there are issues on the environmental also. So, what I wanted to illustrate from here is that the energy and environmental issues are the part of the metal extraction from natural reserves. Now, let us see another feature. If I define for example, the process efficiency, if I define for example, process efficiency.
see process efficiency P e that is equal to theoretical energy that you require to produce a metal. Mind you the theoretical energy is a free energy change. So, that will be free energy in kilo calorie per ton divided by process energy required required to produce metal the units again in kilo calorie per ton when we are defining efficiency if I multiply by 100 then this is the process efficiency. Now for your information or you may be surprised that the process efficiency of most of the pyro metallurgical extraction lay between how much you can guess? Guess some value. This value lies between 4 to 8 percent for titanium sponge, magnesium ingot, ferrochrome low carbon, sodium metal, nickel cathode, refined copper and lead ingot. That means these metal production they have a very low or of the order 4 to 8 percent as the process efficiency. That means a significant amount of energy is required for production of these metals. That you require very large amount then theoretically what would have been required. However, there are definitely scientific and technological reasons for the low process efficiencies. But it is possible to effect substantial energy savings by use of correct science and technology. So, what I have illustrated now that there is a relation or there are uh, environmental and energy issues related to production. So, the aim of this course which is on materials and heat balance is to develop a so called quantitative feel about the energy requirement and waste production to extract metal from ore. That is while developing the course two issues I have considered, two issues are considered for developing the course. One is the energy requirement one is the energy requirement that means you take uh, iron or take copper or got lead or zinc 1 kg how much amount of energy is required that will be the uh, motive behind development of the course and second is the production of say waste that will be generated. Waste generation keeping these two issues in mind and seeing the strong relationship between the energy and environment, I thought that a course on material and heat balance will be a very important to appreciate quantitatively the amounts involved in energy as well as in the generation of the waste. Now, in order to meet these objective, there are emphasis I have given on material and heat balance on materials and heat balance. Now let me uh, say very frankly that it is not the intention of this course to give you the detailed process flow sheets and the detailed, uh, detailed description of the processes. The objective of this course is to do material and heat balance and to this effect the conceptual part is required to solve the material and heat balance for a particular process or a for, for a particular extraction of metal are given to the extent it is required for solving the material and heat balance problem. By that I mean 
that if the details are required, if you want to learn more, you have to see the proper references, which I will give time to time as I will go into the lecture part of it. Now, regarding the organization of the course, what I have done, I will be devoting first few lectures. I will be devoting first few lectures, say on the basics of basics of materials and heat balance, basics of materials and heat balance, like listed units and dimensions. stoichiometry thermochemistry i made i will be also making several attempts to solve the problem that is as much problem that can be solved that i will be uh, going to do in the development of this course also, one of the say important thing that I also included is the so called errors in measurement. Errors in measurement, because many a times by material and heat balance we can calculate for example, the amount of uh, mass that is required. So, we know the mass flow rate of the material, we know that is the temperature, we can calculate the temperature, but then we have to make sure that actually this is a temperature and for that measuring techniques are required and the measuring techniques they are associated with the errors. So, therefore, it is important to see what errors in measurement can do and how to consider those errors in measurement while comparing the calculated value of say temperature or flow rates or uh, weight of the material and so on with actually measured for that. I have also included so called errors in measurement. Now, say remaining lectures, what I will do, uh, I am going to cover the so called materials and heat balance in several metal extraction processes. The typical examples I will be including say ferrous as well as non ferrous metals both. What I have thought in the metallurgical industry or in the material processing industry also cement industry or I any high temperature industry a large amount of fossil fuel is also used in the furnaces. So, I, cons I will I am also going to consider the material and heat balance in the furnaces which are used for solid metal processing in metallurgical industry. Equally, one can use this concept also in the cement industry also, where also very high temperatures are required to produce the cement from the raw material. So, this is what I will be covering in this particular course. More emphasis I will be giving on problem solving. That means, after giving the concept wherever it is required, then immediately I will proceed to solve the problem. So, this I have given solved problems as well as unsolved problems both I have given. I will give you some references from where I have taken these, le these lecture. So, one is the article by T. E. Norget, S. Jahan Shahi and W. J. Rankin. This is an online article on assessing the environmental impact, the environmental impact of mortal production. of metal production uh, processes. Now, this lecture is available online and one can use it if you look in the Google. And second, 
lecture is on of H S ray, which is on industrial and scientific aspect and scientific aspect of metal production. This lecture of H S ray is also available online uh, in the Google.